Hey guys, JT Tran here with another dating advice video for you guys. Answering that age old question, does height matter to women? Well, here is the unvarnished, honest, brutal truth. Height absolutely matters when it comes to attraction, but it matters less when you're in a relationship because after all, we've all seen that short guy dating that tall girl, right? But you have to get there first. You have to be the exception to the rule. If you act and walk like an average guy, you're going to get average results. And I'm going to give you two examples of how a pair of short Asian guys were able to project height through their command presence emotionally as well as physically through their actions. A little background for you guys. In one study, Does Height Matter? An examination of height preferences in romantic coupling, examining dating profiles, only 13.5% of men cared whether a girl was shorter than them, while 48.9% of women cared if the guy was taller than her. So yes, absolutely, women do care about height. So, Basically what you have to understand is women feel more feminine and protected when the male is taller. Sociology professor Yancey had this to say about the height study. The masculine ability to offer physical protection is clearly connected to the gender stereotype of men as protectors. Socially also, girls from watching TV, romantic movies, they're taught to expect to wear high heels look up in their partner's eyes, and wrap their arms around in his neck. Does that mean you're screwed if you're short like me? No, you just have to work harder, be smarter, and gain better. After all, I may not have been born tall, dark, and handsome, but I can settle for being short, stunning, and smooth. So you have to project a non-stereotypical avatar. So one, you can project a strong, competent, protective avatar, or two, you could project a more sexual avatar. All right? You have to understand how you're conveying yourself. You want to emotionally project a command presence. You might not have that physical stature, but you could have that personality or command stature. Things to avoid. One, avoid looking weak. Two, avoid weak body language, like slouching. Three, avoid bad handshakes. Every girl, every guy hates it when some guy comes up to them and they do that. There's a little wimpy, limp-wristed handshake. Don't do that. Avoid bad eye contact. You've got to meet them dead on. Avoid verbal hesitation. Avoid weak hugs. I've had girls tell me this. They hate. They absolutely hate and they will not date a guy that hugs and they feel like they're hugging another girl. All right, you have to feel like a man in her arms. Now, I know some guys who will put lifts in their shoes in order to give themselves a little bit of extra height. But here's the thing, if you're like me, five foot five and you get another, what, two inches? Like five foot seven is still pretty short. I mean, it's just not gonna cut it. If you're five foot two, five foot nothing, two inches, not gonna make a big deal, all right? so. Avoid it, I mean, if you have it, sure, whatever, but honestly, it's not gonna help. Now, here are some things that you can do. First of all, never say that you're intimidated by her height. Instead, you can say something like, what I tell girls, I love dating tall girls. Did you know that scientists say that interracial babies are the most gorgeous babies of all? Could you imagine if you and I had kids? They'd have my looks, they'd have my brains, and I guess she'd have your height too, right? So you can say something like that, convey that you're completely secure in your height, and actually, it would be an advantage, an evolutionary advantage for her to date you. Next, direct the conversation initially. Don't let her control the first 12 minutes of the conversation. This comes from the 757 rule. Now, you want to be flexible, and you want her to get invested into the conversation. And once you've established that attraction, then she'll start talking and then she'll start getting more invested in the conversation with you. But initially, before you have that attraction, you want to direct and be somewhat in control of the conversation, where it flows and how it flows. Fifth 
basically you can project a command presence. Emotionally, she's gonna feel a, that you're a lot taller than you actually are by the way you carry yourself and by the way you act. So things you can do, or you can sit her down because out of sight is out of mind. When you're standing, it's very obvious that she's this tall and you're this tall. What I'll do is I'll either maybe stand up on some stairs, you know, if we're standing in a club and we're at the stairs, I might get at that height. Or I'll simply say, and I'll lead her down to a couch, like, hey, my feet hurt, let's go sit down. And once we've established eye level contact, it's completely forgotten that she's actually taller than me. Be physically dominant. All women, even tall women, love a dominant guy that can pick her up, that can make her feel like that feminine, soft woman. So what I'll do, and remember, I'm five for five. I'll do like a selfie, right? It's like, hey, let's take a picture, and I'll give the camera to somebody, and I'll literally pick her up in my arms. And I've had girls tell me that that was a moment that she wanted to sleep with me because even being a short guy, I wasn't afraid of picking her up, like physically picking her up and showing that kind of masculine side to me. Lead her both verbally and physically be the leader. Don't be intimidated by other men. If you lead the group and you lead the men, the women will follow. In fact, I like to warn women about dating someone like me. I'll tell her something like, girl, more men are going to hit on you than have ever hit on you in your entire life once you start dating me. I, the last girlfriend I had, she was this tall, leggy blonde of a lawyer. And the moment we walked arm in arm into the club, all the girls were staring at us and all the guys were staring at her. And she had such a trip turning down all these guys who are just jumping out of the woodwork like they're ninjas and making all the girls jealous for dating me. So. You've got to be confident enough to prepare yourself to handle that. So basically you're qualifying her, you're showing her that you're completely secure and that not only are you secure, you find that being short, you're very successful because girls want you, guys want to be around you, or at least they want your girlfriend. So you're showing that you're completely secure in that. Now there are a couple of stereotypes specifically for Asian men that you want to be aware of and you want to avoid. First, there is the K-pop star, right? It's considered very effeminate, especially here in the Western world. You know, the guys that have like that comb over down over their eyes. Um, you know, they're wearing the very effeminate kind of clothes and effeminate features. You want to avoid that. And secondly, there is a stereotype of Asian guys being smaller and weaker. So you want to show that you're physically competent and that you're not intimidated by like physical danger. You have to project a significant amount of masculinity, confidence, and competence and stop dressing like the K-pop star, all right? With the comb over, because all you're doing is you're only attracting other Asian girls. You're not attracting and being open to dating everyone. Here are the two examples of the short Asian guys that made women think of them as being, if not physically taller, at least emotionally and personality-wise. So first of all, there's a story from Jocelyn from the Speaking of China blog. Now, she can tell the story better, so you went to her blog, but I'll give you the, uh, the short version. So, Jocelyn was this tall white woman who was in China studying for her PhD or something along that lines, and she was in this Chinese village, and in this village was this river. And in this, you know, river, there was a Chinese factory that was polluting the river, and everyone depended upon the river for their livelihood. She remembers being in this kind of town hall meeting, and then you've got like all these communist officials, all these big wigs that I don't know can send everybody off to the gulag or something like that. The village is complaining to these communist officials that the factory is polluting the river and that it's destroying their livelihood. One of the guys, typical Chinese guy, right? Short, like five foot nothing, she's like five foot 10. But she remembers before having met him and she didn't think any kind of romantic thoughts about him. But the moment he stood up in this town hall meeting and confronted the Chinese communist officials about what they were doing to the village, basically argued with them, and like, because apparently his parents lived there, 
he grew in her eyes. He didn't physically grow, obviously, but emotionally and, and more importantly through attraction, he grew. He became this man who was bigger than life because he was willing to stand in front of these communist officials and actually stand by his, his ethics, but also protect his parents. Right? So that's one example. And then another example is one of my students. And this was the first time it ever been followed by Asian Week. All right, we were in New York, and one of my students happened to be this five foot nothing Singaporean guy, right? So he's got Fabi Asian hair, Fabi Asian teeth, Fabi Asian accent, and he's just tiny. And off in the distance, we're in this rooftop bar called Hotel Gonzavort, which is this gorgeous rooftop bar overlooking the New York skyline. Everybody's dressed fancy, everybody's handsome, everybody's beautiful. And off in the distance, I see this six foot tall blonde. And I grab the student closest to me and I tell him, go over there and tell her she's beautiful. And it happened to be my short Singaporean student who is five foot nothing. <laughs> I grab him and say, go over there and tell her she's beautiful. And he's like, yeah, okay. So he starts walking over there. He's like marching in all this five foot glory. And the reporter sees this and he takes his camera out and he starts talking, he starts taking pictures. I'm like, no! Right? Because who knows what's about to happen. Because realistically, this girl was a blonde, six foot tall girl. Now, do tall women date short guys? Sure. But that's the exception, not the rule. Do Midwestern white girls date, you know, Asian guys that come from a completely different culture and can barely speak English? Sure, it happens. But that's the exception, not the rule. And he went up there, and this is literally what he said. I just want you to imagine, again, Five foot nothing, short Asian guy, Bobby accent, six foot tall blonde, and he literally has to stand up on his tippy toes, reach up with his fingers, and he keno turns her, and this is literally what he says. He says, you are fucking beautiful. And you know what? If you were to go to the Asian Week newspaper, there's me on the front cover, right? You open the article, there's me talking, there's me lecturing, there's me talking to girls, and then there's a picture of my student, my five foot nothing Singaporean student, sitting down, cell phone out, holding her hand as she's sitting with him, getting her number, all right? In seven seconds, he was able to convince her that he was more than just a short Asian guy, that he was an actual romantic dating partner, okay? So there you guys go. Does height matter in dating? Absolutely, it matters, especially in attraction, less so in the relationship. And hopefully with these do's and don'ts of using your height to your advantage, you guys are going to not let height stand in the way. All right, so stay tuned for the next videos. Be sure to subscribe. 